In this short video, we'll look at uh, the application of Norton's current law to a two-loop circuit with current source. Um, in this case, um, we are trying to find the differential equation that governs the input-output relationship for this circuit. The input is a current source, II, so this is an AC source, but not a voltage source, but a current source. Uh, we take the output across this uh, resistor R2 here, right in between, this is V0, our output. So we need a differential equation that relates II to V0. Now, uh, there are two loops here. You might think that we can apply the Kirchhoff's current uh, voltage law, but won't. you can't do that in this loop directly. You may be able to do this in this loop. So let's apply Norton's current law to solve this problem. The first thing you do is uh, denote all nodes and node voltages. So we have nodes A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, and then we'll do not all voltages VA, VB, VC, VD. Now we need to assign a ground voltage. We choose this node, node E to be ground. You could choose any node to be uh, ground voltage. In this case we chose E to be ground. So we set VE equal to zero. Um, you might also notice that uh, between node C and D there are no um, no passive elements, no capacitors, no inductors, no resistors, or no power source. Therefore, um, node C and D are at the same potential. Vc is therefore equal to Vd. Um, now, the next thing we do is we assume current direction in each branch. So we assume a configuration of the circuit where currents are flowing in certain directions. Um, you just need to assign the current directions, and you have to be consistent when you write your equations. So let's assume that uh, current flows in this direction through R1. So I R1 flows from B to A. That necessarily means that VB is at a higher potential compared to VA. Uh, same thing with uh, V I R2 current through R2. So we're assuming that VB is at a greater potential than VE. And uh, current through the capacitor IC Again, assuming that VB is greater than VC. Um, this current is the same that flows through R3 too. It's the same current. Um, and of course, uh, our input current for this instant of time, we assume that this current II is flowing in this direction, which means that VA is greater than VE right here. Current always flows from uh, a higher potential to a low potential, lower potential. So the next thing we do is we write down uh, Norton's uh, current law at each node. So we we'll look at node B. So we can see all the currents in this configuration are leaving this node. Therefore, I can write uh, this equation minus IR1 minus IR2 minus IC equals zero. All currents leaving the node are denoted negative. All currents that come into the node are denoted positive. And we write down the equations for each one. So IR1 is VB minus VA by R1. IR2 is VB minus VE divided by R2, but VE is zero. So this will be VB divided by R2. And IC is um, what is IC? IC is the rate of change of charge in the capacitors. We apply the capacitor equations, and this is the equation you get. So, this is the rate of change of charge in the capacitor. So, what I've done here is substitute for all of these and multiplied by a negative sign throughout. So, that gives us equation one. Um, now let's apply the same law at node E. All the incoming currents here are I, 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 R2 and I, C. So I can say this equals zero. There are no outgoing currents. And I can write down the equations for I, R3. I, R3 is nothing but V, D divided by R3. I, R2 is nothing but V, B divided by R2. And I, I is what it is. So I write down that equation. I get that. Um, Vt divided by R3 plus Vb divided by R2 plus Ii equals 0 uh, which essentially now I know I told you earlier that Vc equal to Vd it's the same potential there's nothing happening on this branch so this potential is the same as that so I substitute it for Vc here or Vd here in terms of Vc and I get this equation and then I have another node equation at A 
So if you look at node A, IR1 enters the node, II leaves the node, so I can write IR1 minus II equal to 0, substitute for values of IR1, IR1 is nothing but VB minus VA divided by R1 minus II equal to 0. Now finally we'll use equation 1, 2, 3 to eliminate the things that we don't want from these equations. Now if you notice VB is nothing but uh, V0. It's the same potential. VB is V0. So we want VB. Uh, we don't want VA. We don't want VC. And we, yes, VC. We don't want VC and uh, derivatives thereof, which is where uh, VC dot. So how do we do this? Uh, we look at these two equations. We see VB minus VA divided by R1. Uh, it has v, VA here. We need to get rid of VA. We use this equation right here to substitute for VB minus VA divided by R1 as II and then we need to get rid of VC dot we'll use this equation to generate VC dot and do that so from this equation I can write VC dot as this just rearranging this to get VC and taking a derivative of uh, the resulting equation and then we stick this into this VC dot into this equation and eliminate this one using ii to get my final our final uh, equation here and if you notice here and, and notice that i have uh, substituted for vb vb as v0 so here right here you know, vb has become v0 this has become ii and this is again vb is vb dot is v0 dot and vc i substitute from here like vc dot is switched from there like, like so and I get my final equation which has my input uh, i output v0 and uh, no other uh, quantities other than of course r1, rc, r2 and r3 so that's the final equation.